Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Jared Burgess, who is a sales engineer at StorageCraft. So StorageCraft is a cybersecurity company which specializes in data protection, data management, and business continuity solutions, as well as backup and recovery. So welcome to the jam, Jared. Hi, thanks for having me. No worries. So to kick off, um, so given how disruptive COVID-19 has been um, last year and continues to be, um, what are the more significant technical or engineering changes and challenges um, your partners and the end users have faced and uh, yeah, due to COVID-19? Yeah, look, it's been an interesting one. So if you look at it, uh, the whole working from home, people not being in an office, you know, is probably the most dramatic change we saw. Um, you know, and that really played with a lot of challenges to service providers, yeah? So they couldn't go on site to see their customers. They couldn't go in and do things like um, removable media changes. Um, there's also this whole logic of the data wasn't stored where it used to be. Yeah, so we weren't working from the office where we all basically could access file shares and that. People were saving data locally on the laptops because they're working from home. It's just easier and faster. Um, so that whole strategy around how do I protect data had to be re-looked at. Um, you know, 365, you know, I don't think anyone really saw the uptake or the usage that was going to be there. That, that basically people did this quick migration, which was great. Um, lots of work for our MSPs that, you know, businesses changed overnight almost. Um, but then they start looking and saying is, well, my on-prem exchange server has now disappeared. It's now in the cloud. What do I do around data protection? Um, so we saw this huge uptake in how do I start protecting similar data now located in different locations? Um, and then things like offsite backups, how do I get data offsite? You know, I used to take a drive home with me. Um, I'm no longer going into the office. How do I start looking at leveraging different capabilities um, to remove that really that human element out of the equation? Um, you know, so I think that's really where we saw the majority of changes is that a lot of process had to change. A lot of the way that people access and store data um, which then flows on to how do I now protect that data and make sure that I still have that recoverability of data if something does go wrong. Right, yeah. And um, more specifically, um, what changes have you seen res with respect to security threats um, over the last 12 months? <laughs> hey, look, so one of the big ones is, is that, you know, the security threats haven't really diminished. Um, if anything, I think they've actually taken off more. Um, you know, phishing scams, you know, I had a conversation with a partner, you know, probably mid last year, you know, like the adoption of 365 was more people were now getting spam. Um, more people were then clicking on links. Yeah. And they were basically having to adopt things like two factor authentication. Um, you know, ransomware is still a big thing out there. You know, people are still getting crypto. Um, you know, it's one of the things that you, maybe you don't, hear about it as much, but it is still well and truly happening. So that whole reliance on, you know, my data is now in different places. I've got to start looking at different ways to be able to secure it. But even bigger is, where do I now recover it to? Um, you know, and so there's been a lot of this play around these security threats are increasing um, on a daily basis. Um, but there's this real focus now around how do I recover? It? How does I as a service provider start providing that service to my customers where Potentially, I can't go on site and recover data. Um, I need alternative locations. So how do I stand it up somewhere else? You know, so I think there's been this real force of adoption of technology really, really quickly through this because people aren't slowing down being, you know, the user behavior change is still huge. And the education of please don't click on links, um, you know, don't access things if you don't know where they're from. If someone asks you to go and click on a link, you know what, go straight to that service provider. You know, if you need to authenticate to something, right, go to Microsoft. Um, you know, we see it internally. We get a lot of things, of phishing scams to get our credentials. Um, so, you know, the validation is educate the users to basically center and say, if someone sends you something, go to the source. Um, but the big thing is, is from a service provider is how do they test the functionality to be able to restore data? How do they get the confidence that if something does go wrong, that they actually have the processes and procedures in place where they can actually recover that customer's data quickly? Right, yeah. And um, organizations are all over the place. All of their partners and customers might be under significant pressure to protect their data with the same or fewer resources they had previously um, before the COVID-19 
Um, so what solutions does StorageCraft specifically offer to address these challenges? Yeah, look, so we released a product about two years ago called ShadowSafe, uh, which was all built around how do I manage at scale? Yeah, so really nice in that managed service provider market space where now I actually have a singular console um, and I can manage all of my customers from it. And not just manage, but I can actually restore data. I can recover. I can virtualize. I can do that end-to-end data protection and recovery strategy without having to actually go on-site to a customer. So I can recover a machine from anywhere in the world. So the platform's cloud-hosted. Um, so basically, they can log in from wherever they are and then be able to recover that data. The great thing about it is, is that we can start reducing the amount of people we need. Um, I don't need a high level tech to go and log into machines and validate the backups ran or that they're recoverable. I can almost get a help desk person to basically look at a screen that says, if there's a thing on there that's red, hey, go and have a look, see what it does. Um, then I can engage a high level person. Yeah, so really changing that dynamics, you know, and it's the old cliche, how do you do more with less? Um, but I can really scale up the amount of customers that I'm looking after without having to have this curve of my resource profile needs to go up to be able to die on board because it's all out of this whole single platform and single management. Um, I still can do the individual so the data is segregated, um, but it's really about being able to manage at scale. Yeah? So really that MSP landscape works fantastic in. Right, yeah. Um, and lastly, um looking forward what advice would you give your partners and customers about how to best navigate this year um look given all the challenges of last year yeah look i think the big thing is around standardization um you know really simplifying the operation looking you know and it's the reason why we bought technology like shadow safe to the market where we can standardize now we can now go to a customer and be able to standardize on a single data protection strategy um, to be able to know no matter whether the customer, what they are, how they're operating is that we can really standardize down, that we simplify their operation. Um, the other big thing is we can then run standard process. Yeah, and I think this is where, when you start looking at the goals of an MSP, yeah, a lot of the guys that I see that are being really successful during this time um, are literally getting to almost a cookie cutter approach. Yeah? The simplized processes around how they do data protection, around how do they do that recovery, um, they've built their bulletproof processes, yeah? So they're leveraging technology, but the big thing is, is that it's a real documented process. Um, it's also something that they test, yeah? So testing is this key component of it is, it validates the process, it validates the technology, and they can really stand behind that service that they're providing to their customers that, you know, you can sleep easy at night that I know that the solution I'm providing actually works. And if something did happen, then I can actually guarantee that I can recover data I don't have to start thinking on the spot around, hey, something's happened, what do I do now? They literally just pull out their operating procedure and go, great, customer one, I follow the same bouncing ball process and I get the outcome at the end, yeah? So I think this whole standardization, automation, I, I think is the other big key, yeah? So automating as much as they can, yeah? The reporting, the analytics, you know, things that we've built into our technology um, where they don't have to go and generate data or generate reporting. They can basically get that sent to them on a monthly basis where they can actually then forward that onto the customer to also show value. Um, and I think that's the other big thing around where MSPs are sort of changing. They've got to start showing value out of the services they're providing. Um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into what these guys do, um, but a lot of it, you know, the customer doesn't see on the daily basis. So it's being able to report that back to the user around, the value of the service they're actually paying for and the outcomes that they're actually getting and the validation that that service is actually proven that they are actually capable of getting what they're paying for. All right, awesome, cool. Well, uh, that concludes today's 10 minute IT jam with Storage Craft sales engineer, Jared Burgess. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jared. Mate, thanks for having me.